Have you ever wondered how a seemingly ordinary piece of steel can be transformed into a combination wrench capable of withstanding force, torque and wear without deforming? Behind that tool you use to loosen or tighten a bolt lies a whole chain of thermal, mechanical and metallurgical processes that convert metal bars into industrial precision instruments. Today we'll take you step by step inside the factory to discover how these wrenches are manufactured with the accuracy and durability demanded by the modern world. The journey begins long before the key even exists. It all starts with the arrival of steel in the form of bars or thick wires known as wire rod. Each delivery is unloaded, sorted and identified with codes that allow its origin to be traced at every stage of the process. Manufacturers typically work with alloy steels such as chromium vanadium or chromium molybdenum. These materials are selected because they combine hardness, wear resistance and good impact resistance. This mixture of elements, carbon, chromium, silicon, molybdenum, vanadium and phosphorus in precise quantities, enables the final tool to meet international safety and performance standards. Before entering the production line, each batch is analysed using optical emission spectrometers. These devices verify the exact proportion of elements present in the metal in seconds. If anything does not match the established parameters, the batch is rejected or sent for correction. In addition to chemical analysis, specialised inspectors visually check the bars to ensure there are no cracks, rolling defects or inclusions that could weaken the tool during forging. Once approved, the wire rod moves to the cutting area. Automatic saws, either disc or band saws, segment the material into pieces that will form the basis of each key. The length of these segments typically varies between 150 and 300 mm, depending on the final size of the tool. The tolerance cannot exceed 1 mm. If the cut is inaccurate, the volume of metal reaching critical areas, such as the mouth or the central body of the key, could be insufficient and cause failures later on. After cutting, the ends are faced to ensure they are perpendicular and perfectly aligned. They are checked with gauges to guarantee that each piece can fit correctly into the forging press. Not all batches arrive with the level of cleanliness required for the process. Some suppliers deliver steel with traces of rust or adhered particles, so each bar may undergo a mild chemical pickling or an abrasive blasting that cleans the surface and leaves the piece ready to be heated. Once prepared, the steel segments are placed in a reheating furnace. There they remain until they reach between 1000 and 1250 degrees Celsius, depending on the alloy. At these temperatures, the steel becomes malleable, allowing it to be shaped without losing its integrity. When the parts are red-hot, trained operators remove them and place them in gigantic presses. These presses exert forces close to 3,000 tons and use hardened steel dies that have the approximate shape of the key. This process doesn't happen all at once. It typically occurs in three stages. Preformed. The metal is distributed to take on the general shape of the tool. Main configuration. The head, mouth and handle are defined in greater detail. Final finishing or facing excess material is corrected and symmetry is sought throughout the piece. As the blows of the press compress the material, the internal structure of the steel changes. The metal fibers align themselves to form the final shape, increasing the wrench's mechanical strength. This phenomenon is key. Properly forged steel will have a longer lifespan and withstand higher loads without deforming. During this process, infrared cameras and temperature sensors verify that the heat remains within the appropriate range. Similarly, the exact weight of each piece is monitored to ensure uniformity between batches. After forging, the metal is subjected to internal stresses and structural changes. To correct these, the parts undergo a heat treatment known as normalizing. In this stage, the pieces are placed inside controlled atmosphere furnaces that operate between 780 and 920 degrees Celsius. There they are kept for a specific time to allow the grains deformed during forging to dissolve and new, finer and more homogeneous grains to form. Electronic sensors record the entire thermal curve, heating, stabilization and cooling. Each batch also undergoes metallographic analysis, where grain size is checked using optical microscopes. A fine, homogeneous structure is synonymous with a high-quality batch. With the microstructure now balanced, the pieces enter a crucial stage – fine stamping. Here, enormous presses apply precise force to shape every functional detail of the key. In a matter of seconds, the final contours of the open end are formed. 
the box or ring cavity is molded and the thicknesses are adjusted to ensure perfect machining. Small geometric references are also created, which will serve as support points to secure the piece to the CNC machines without loss of alignment. During the process, preliminary codes and batch numbers are stamped, which are essential for tracking each tool throughout production. To ensure everything matches the design, technical staff use gauges, metal templates and digital measurements to confirm that the part meets every tolerance before moving to the next stage. Before reaching the CNC machines, the parts must be free of any particles that could affect the cutting tools. The cleaning process includes shot blasting, metallic microspheres impact the surface and remove burrs, degreasing, tunnels with industrial detergents and automated rinses remove oils, light pickling, in some cases it is applied to dissolve small layers of oxide. Each batch is inspected with magnifying glasses to ensure that the edges are not rounded or eroded. In this phase, the key ceases to be a raw piece and begins its transformation into a finished tool. CNC machining centers, working at high speed, precisely shape each critical area. First, the open end is formed, adjusting its angle, generally 15 degrees, and machining the teeth that will make firm contact with screws and nuts. Then, the socket is created, whether hexagonal, bihexagonal, or with special geometries depending on the model. The entire process is monitored by sensors and automated systems capable of instantly correcting deviations, guaranteeing accuracy in every key. After machining, the tool must ensure a perfectly flat and uniform contact. Grinding machines equipped with vitrified abrasive discs are used, removing microns of material per pass. Then a fine polishing is performed, leaving the surface with a roughness between 0.4 and 1.6 micrometers. This provides better grip on the screw less wear and tear. Greater accuracy in applied torque parallelism, flatness and finish are checked using profilometers and optical standards. Although the wrench has already taken its final shape, it has not yet reached the necessary hardness to withstand constant stress. To achieve this, a carefully controlled thermal process is applied, combining three stages to define the tool's ultimate strength. It all begins with austenitizing, where the parts are placed in furnaces that reach temperatures between 780 and 880 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the internal structure of the steel is transformed, making it suitable for subsequent hardening. Once the precise temperature is reached, the keys immediately undergo hardening, a rapid cooling process using oil or special polymers. This abrupt temperature change creates a crystalline structure known as martensite, which is extremely hard but also brittle if not corrected. To balance this hardness with the necessary toughness, the tempering phase is carried out. The pieces are reheated to between 150 and 350 degrees Celsius to relieve internal stresses, stabilize the material and prevent fractures during use. Each batch is analyzed through rigorous quality tests. Rockwell hardness tests are performed, where the values must be between 45 and 55 HRC to guarantee adequate performance. After heat treatment, very slight deformations may appear. Therefore, a final grinding is performed before proceeding. CNC machines eliminate thousandths of a millimeter to ensure that each key meets the exact standard. Coordinate measuring machines are used to validate shape, alignment and tolerances. Once the wrench has reached its final shape and acquired the necessary hardness through heat treatment, one crucial step remains. Protecting its surface to prevent corrosion, enhance its aesthetic appearance and ensure it can withstand demanding environments for years. This stage not only defines the tool's visual finish, but also its resistance to moisture, chemicals and everyday wear and tear. To achieve this, the keys undergo various surface coatings. The most common is electrodeposition, also known as electroplating, where an electric current deposits an extremely thin layer of protective material over the entire metal surface. Depending on the required quality level, the type of tool and its end use, the piece can receive different finishes. Bright chrome, which provides a polished, reflective and visually appealing appearance, as well as offering an effective barrier against oxidation. Nickel, which gives a slightly more opaque tone and improves wear resistance. Matte phosphate coating, ideal for tools that need a finish with less glare and a more grippy feel. Epoxy coatings, used to create a thicker protective layer, very useful in harsh industrial environments. Elastomer handles or inserts, which are applied to specific models to improve grip and ease of use. Each coating is rigorously inspected. 
to ensure uniform thickness and compliance with technical specifications, X-ray measuring equipment is used, capable of detecting variations of microns in real time. Furthermore, as part of the quality control process, salt spray tests are performed, an accelerated test that exposes the tool to a humid saline environment for hours or days, simulating years of use under harsh conditions. Only the keys that pass these tests are ready to proceed to the marking and packaging phase. Fiber optic laser engraving is used to add measurement in millimeters or inches, relevant standard manufacturer's brand batch number, internal code for tracking. The laser does not alter the strength of the steel, guaranteeing a lasting mark. The finished keys are sorted by size or version. Automated pick-and-place systems store them in trays, protective foam inserts, or professional cases. Labels, barcodes, and in some kits, user and safety manuals are added. Care is taken to ensure that no tool touches another to avoid marks or scratches. The finished tools are stored in specially conditioned warehouses, where constant ventilation and humidity control prevent any risk of rust or surface deterioration. Each batch is organized on shelves or in protected containers to ensure they are not damaged by bumps or scratches. Once the inventory is verified, the wrenches are prepared for shipment to distributors, stores, mechanical workshops and factories, eventually reaching the users who will put them into service. After going through each of these stages, from raw steel to the finished, chromed, marked and perfectly calibrated tool, it becomes clear that a combination wrench is much more than just a piece of metal. Every forging stroke, every micron of grinding and every heat treatment contributes precision, strength and reliability. The next time you use it to loosen a bolt or adjust a machine, you'll be holding the result of an industrial process involving science, engineering and rigorous quality control that leaves nothing to chance.